The House of the Dragon creators made sure fans would watch each episode with eyes wide open in awe, because the attention to detail is simply insane. Learn how costumes add to the characters' stories, discover which bedroom scene was carefully rehearsed, plus find out who asked the showrunners to finally bring Mushroom to the screen. Mm. Powerful Colors the audience's expectations for the Game of Thrones prequel were astronomically high, especially for the visuals, which are supposed to remind us of the flagship show. But as House of the Dragon was set almost two centuries earlier, it still had to have its own style. So the showrunners called in someone who has experience working with multi-billion franchises. Veteran costume designer Janie Tamim has a lengthy resume, which includes six of the Harry Potter films and two James Bond movies, Skyfall and Spectre. However, Janie revealed that she'd never seen Game of Thrones. Thankfully, the showrunners came up with the meaning behind the costumes, giving different colors special significance. They explain that colors represent families, as well as their political ties. For example, the Lannisters prefer red and gold, the Valerians are frequently seen wearing blue, green, and silver, and the Targaryens' colors are red, black, and gold. Tamim definitely managed to incorporate this concept successfully to create one-of-a-kind costumes for House of the Dragon. And even more, she showed how the characters changed with time. Just have a look. In the beginning, Rhaenyra's just a young girl. She wears light colors, like yellow and beige. But little by little, she's gonna start wearing the family's colors. And the same with Alicent. She started wearing green when she decided that she's a Hightower before a Targaryen. Her emerald gown from Episode 5 pulled all the attention away from the king and his heir. It wasn't just a dress, it was a statement. Another detail that viewers should keep an eye on is textures. Symbols and Sigils Fans have definitely spotted material that looks like dragon scales on Rhaenyra's dragon riding costume, while the Valerians channel their seahorse energy with fish scales on their armor. Also, many characters have their house motif embroidered onto their clothing. The sigils get pretty subtle, so pay attention to tiny details, like the dragons that are used as fasteners on Viserys and Daemon's cloaks. And undoubtedly, the highlight is Rhaenyra's coronation outfit. Apart from the Targaryen dragons as a centerpiece, it includes the sigils of other great houses. On the left-hand side of the necklace, there are Lannisters, then Aaron. On the right-hand side, the House of Tully's sigil is embedded. At the back, it has Stark and Martell. The whole look of the now-official heir to the realm was inspired by an ancient Moroccan bride. And the gorgeous headpiece draws on ancient mosaics and big gold halos like those found in Byzantine churches. But the outfits that the show's designer loved to work on most might surprise you. The carefully rehearsed scene Janie Tamim revealed that she had lots of fun with all the armor on the show. She explained that because of the shape, it is as exciting as designing a corset. In those times, going to battle was so ornamental, revealed the show's designer. For them, it was sexy to go to battle and have the best armor. Damon's black ensemble during the tourney was actually made of a very light plastic and was inspired by ancient Japanese samurais. Eagle-eyed viewers also might have noticed that it was decked with rubies, symbolizing Damon's wealth. It might have been extra painful for him to lose to Sir Kristen, who had very cheap and rusty armor. And speaking of the Dornish Knight, we bet that many fans were watching the scene where Rhaenyra seduced her guard with one clear thought. How's he gonna take all that armor off? The show's designer revealed that it really was a tough scene. The whole process was carefully rehearsed, because all those pieces were to be taken off one by one. All in all, there were over 300 costumes created for the main characters of the first season, and 2,000 outfits for the actress. Yet Janie Tamim shared that it wasn't that difficult, as when you have a beautiful cast, half your work is done. Now let's have a quick look at the iconic weapon of both Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. The Cat's Paw Dagger It was introduced in the very first season of the original show. The dagger belonged to Littlefinger and was made from Valerian steel. Eventually, it turned out that the weapon had ended the Night King. But was it so helpful only because of the precious steel? In House of the Dragon, it was revealed that the dagger belonged to Aegon the Conqueror and carries his secret prophetic dream. So it is more than just a random blade. Perhaps that's why viewers can spot it in every episode. Alicent has even cut Rhaenyra's hand with it. We wonder what else this sacred Targaryen weapon might be used for. 
By the way, when asked about his favorite props, Patty Considine revealed that he is still campaigning for HBO to give him this dagger. If I thought they'd give it me at the end, HBO, you know, I was a good king after all. <laughs> but his on-screen brother actually was presented with a prop from the set. I got given the knife, revealed Matt Smith, and I gave it to Emma, actually, on like day one. That's what we call a gesture. However, Smith also shared that he took a bigger prize with him. I nicked Dark Sister, shared the actor. Dark Sister's in my lounge, yeah. Hmm, we had also think that Matt was just joking. Next, we'll talk about events and characters which readers of the Fire and Blood novel would love to see on screen. But first, check this out. Visit our awesome merch shop. We have branded t-shirts, hoodies, eco bags, and even phone cases. You can choose between dozens of unique and awesome designs. Click the link under the video and find your perfect match. Where's Mushroom? Those who have read George R. R. Martin's book know that the history of House Targaryen was written from the perspective of Archmaester Gildane, and the source he sometimes refers to is a court jester named Mushroom. He's described as a three-foot-tall dwarf with an enormous head. Because of that, Mushroom was thought to be feeble-minded, so kings and lords and princes did not scruple to hide their secrets from him, elaborates Gildane. This allowed him to provide the most accurate and scandalous history of the time. Understandably, fans who have read the books were disappointed not to see him on screen. But at Rhaenyra and Lenore's wedding welcome feast, we finally saw a glimpse of the gesture. He's on stage beating a drum during a musical performance. And it was none other than Patty Considine, who plays King Viserys, who asked to put him in the show. The actor shared that when he first read the script for the banquet, he immediately messaged showrunner Ryan Condal. Ryan, can we stick Mushroom in there somewhere? I was fighting every minute to find an excuse to include Mushroom, revealed Patty. However, there was another scene that was filmed, but cut from the series. Hairstylist and makeup artist Tanya Cooper shared that originally, there were plans for King Viserys' wedding to Alicent Hightower to make it to the screen. Sadly, it was cut due to time constraints. The dress, the hair, the tiara… Such a shame it didn't make the edit, wrote Cooper. Cutting room floor. Sad times. And Emily Carey, who portrayed young Alicent, commented, This look was genius. One of my faves. House of the Dragon director Greg Yatanes also took to Instagram to post pics from the scene. It turns out that an argument between Alicent and Rhaenyra also wasn't aired. Two scenes unfortunately didn't make it to the final cut, he wrote. The aftermath fight between Millie Alcock and Emily Carey. Both were quite powerful. Hopefully one day HBO will release all those cut moments, as we sure would love to see them. And we're moving to the next detail fans have noted as somehow different from the canon. The Dangerous Seat Back in 2013, George R. R. Martin wrote in a lengthy blog post about the difference between his Iron Throne and the show's version. The HBO throne has become iconic, he admitted. And well it might, it's a terrific design. And yet, it's still not right. Daenerys also wasn't impressed with the king's seat when she finally saw it. I imagined a mountain of swords too high to climb, she told Jon Snow. So many fallen enemies you could only see the soles of Aegon's feet. Well, in House of the Dragon, there are a ton more swords. The ground around the throne and the steps leading up to it are all covered in melted blades. There's also more height to the seat, and it appears to be more asymmetrical than the Game of Thrones version. So it's safe to say that it's now closer to Martin's written description. Moreover, now the throne is way less comfortable to say the least. The audience witnessed King Viserys cut himself on it and how his wounds refused to heal. The reason for this is quite symbolic, and actually has deep roots in Targaryen history and Game of Thrones lore. When Aegon the Conqueror constructed the Ironwork Monstrosity, it was with the intention of causing extreme discomfort. A king should never sit easy, he explained. One of his descendants, Maegor the Cruel, usurped the throne. And when his nephew raised banners against him, very few houses came to Maegor's aid. The legend says that he chose to spend the night brooding alone on the Iron Throne. The next morning, he was found dead in the seat with the throne's blades and spikes impaled through his body. Hence the superstition that those who don't deserve to rule will suffer injury from the Iron Throne. So maybe Viserys' cut signals that his poor judgments will only lead to his family and his kingdom's ruin. Next, let's talk about another symbol of Targaryen rule. Here comes the villain! Showrunner Ryan Condal promised that the prequel show would introduce the audience to 17 dragons. However, not all of them will appear in the first season. 
but the viewers have already witnessed how Vagar, the biggest dragon alive, has been claimed by young Amund. All his life he has been picked on and bullied for his egg not hatching. So when he sees an opportunity to get himself a dragon who just lost her rider, he does it. Aemon. He's quite an introverted, sad kid who's gone through many hardships and when he gets that dragon. His mood changes and he feels like he can do anything he wants. And that's where that villain comes into play. It's him. It's me. It's already clear how claiming Vagar has heightened Aemon's arrogance. No doubt in future episodes, the audience will see the one-eyed Targaryen acting far more imperious towards not only his nephews, but even his older brother. If you liked this video, support Asa by sending a super thanks. Just click on the thanks button under the video and choose an amount to donate. Stay awesome, and remember, we value each one of you. And check out our other videos about House of the Dragon and its awesome cast.